Hey there, Mr. Witherow. All right, what we're gonna get into today is solving, right? And we know that it's solving because there's an equal sign here, right? Rationals just means fractions. And we look here, and here's the cool thing about fractions and solving with fractions is the fact that if we can get the denominator to be the same, then we can ignore the fraction. We can just look at the numerator. All right. So the very first thing you have to do is you look at if they are the same, x minus 6, x minus 6, x minus 6, then we can sort of kind of just ignore this. So there's your frac there's your equation. 15 plus 7x equals negative 6. And now it goes back to just a plain Jane solving for x. You have to do the opposite operations to get rid of something or move it to the other side, right? And so now we get x equals negative 3. Done, right? Pretty cool. So in the whole thing is the fact that as long as the denominator is the same, then we can simply just focus on the numerator. Well, of course, there's always the first ones are always the easy ones. Then we get into the ones that have different denominators. So what do you do here? Well, what we do here is the fact that you have to talk about your common denominator. What is the common denominator of 7x, 7, and x? Well, it looks like it's 7x because that's the factors. Remember, each factor has to be represented. So then you simply ask yourself, what do I multiply the denominator by to make it look like the common denominator? So this one, we already do. We already have it. So then you can take this 3x and just bring it down. Bring the plus sign down. Now, what do you multiply 7 by to get 7x? You multiply it by x. So I always just put it up in the numerator. So now what happens is that we just ignore the denominator and 1 times x is just x equals. And then what do you multiply x by to get 7x? Well, that looks like it's 7. So then 4 times 7 is 28. So now we have our solving or now we got rid of the fractions, and then this is what it looks like. And then we combine like terms and divide. So x is seven. All right, what does this look like in more de depth, right? That's what probably some of you are asking. Well, how does that work like that? All right, this works like this, but if I just take this and cover that up again, what happens here is that three x over seven x, I gotta space this out a little bit. One over seven equals four over x. Okay, so I'm gonna space this out. Common denominator is seven x. We agree to that. So if I multiply this by seven x over seven x, right? That is just simply just a one, right? And then if I multiply this by, really I don't wanna multiply by seven x over seven x, but if I multiply this by seven x, and I multiply this by 7x, right? So then 7x over 7x cancels each other out. And then that's why the 3x falls down. 7 over 7 cancels out, so that's why the 1x falls down. And then the x cancels out with the x, that's why the 4 times 7 equals 28 goes out. So if you actually multiply each one of these fractions by the common denominator, then things cancel out, right? And the most importantly, the denominator cancels out. You get rid of the denominator, you get rid of the fraction, and you're left with this. All right. That's what's happening when I do it in this shortcut method up here, to where I'm simply just multiplying it by the top, because then in my head, I already know that this is all gonna cancel out. So we can have factors that look like this, or we can have factors that look like this, right? So now we have uh, an expression here. And the expression says to us the fact that the common denominator, more times than not, is this one that has the multiplication already in it. So the common denominator is the seven times the factor of x minus three. So this first fraction, it already is matched. So that means the one falls down. The plus sign comes down. The second fraction is just a seven in the bottom. So that means it's missing the X minus three. So that's the quantity of X minus three. So that means I know where I have to, to distribute. 
And then the third, or the one on the other side of the equal sign, is x minus 3, which means that it's missing the 7, so I'm going to multiply this by 7. So that one's the easy one, that's 21. This one over here, for the, everybody to see, it looks like that. So now you got to take this, and it's important to write it like this, especially when you have a subtraction. If this was a subtraction sign, make sure that you would distribute a minus or a negative 4. But this one's a positive 4, so I can just do it with that. So this is 1 plus 4x minus 12 equals 21. And then you can solve from there. All right? So the whole thing with solving equations, solving rationals, is that the key is to find the common denominator and then get rid of it or multiply by what's missing. Right? So what's missing? The other thing that we would want to look at is something that looks like this right so now this comes and this pulls everything that we've been doing uh, for a while now and that is now I have to factor to see what the factors are that look like the that's in here so this becomes x so what do you multiply to get negative 12 that adds up to negative 4 x minus 6 x plus 2 right so most of the time when you got these two factors sitting out here those two factors make up this thing, right? Maybe give that a shot and see if that's true. Most of the time it's true, sometimes it's not. You have to be careful with that. Um, it looks like the top one I can factor out a four, or excuse me, I can factor out a two, and I'm left with two x plus one, right? Two times two x is four x, and two times one is two. So this may be handy, I doubt it, because if, since I'm solving, I really don't want to do this, I just want to leave this four x. So don't do that, don't do extra work right? If I'm solving, I want to leave it like that. All right. So now if this is my greatest common or my common denominator, then which one of these two factors is missing from this fraction? Well, it looks like it's x plus two. So I'm going to write x plus two. Which one of these factors is missing from this denominator? It looks like it's x minus six. So now this thing can fall down. Four x plus two now I have a couple of distribution problems that are going on here. 2 times x plus 2 plus 7 times x minus 6. And then away I go. The whole goal is when you're solving with rationals is to multiply each and every fraction by the common denominator or the term that is missing from the common denominator. All right? Sometimes you have to factor. Sometimes you don't. If they are the same, then you don't have to do anything about it. You can ignore the denominator, and you can just look at the top. But then you have to go figure out what it is from there. All right? All right, keep having fun.